Hi. Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, Astro Labs. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Roland Daher, uh, Chief Operating Officer, and this is Mohamed Meki, uh, founding partner of um, Astro Labs. Uh, tonight, very interesting topic, uh, expanding uh, to Saudi Arabia. Um, I know a lot of you here might be looking to uh, expand, but just to get a sense of uh, who, who's, uh, who's in the room, who here uh, owns a company or represents uh, a company or group of companies that are actively looking to expand to Saudi Arabia in the next uh, few months? Okay, great. So. Okay, do you, but uh, okay, d do are you an entrepreneur or uh, do you own a company? Okay, uh, what do you do? So, um, uh, yeah, so we're building uh, chatbots. Okay, and great. The latest product has is very applicable to AI. Very good, great. So uh, I think I mean since uh, there's that concentration of uh, people looking to expand, uh, everybody knows what the opportunity is like in, in Saudi Arabia. I mean, like it's, it's uh, one of the largest uh, markets in the, in the Arab world in terms of uh, population, in terms of uh, uh, purchasing power, uh, mobile penetration. Uh, Mohammed, would you like to add uh, anything? Yeah, I mean, uh, so Saudi is particularly exciting, um, not just because of obviously the wealth and the um, uh, per capita and, uh, and, and the, the changes that are happening, but also the internet connectivity. So uh, here at Astrolabs, obviously, we have a focus on technology companies and enabling innovative companies. Um, and what we've seen in, uh, in Saudi is really a big shift and, and uh, they're global leaders in internet consumption when it comes to uh, everything from uh, you know, video, YouTube, uh, social media engagement, you know, their, their, their engagement numbers are off the charts. Uh, and there's not much when you look at it in terms of locally produced um, content and companies that really meet local needs in the market. And so that represents a big opportunity for people to be able to come in and, um, uh, and, and address that. Exactly. And a lot of people have been trying to, to come in. Uh, over the, the the last years, but uh, I mean, needless to say, there were challenges yep. uh, uh, that were common uh, across the GCC. Mainly the hundred percent uh, ownership, very strict requirements, especially in terms of capital requirement. Like you know, any company looking to uh, come into Saudi, uh, th there was a way to do it, but it required t tens of millions of Saudi reals in uh, paid up capital upfront, which makes it a high barrier for entry, especially for uh, startups or small companies working in, uh, yep. in innovation. In some, some fields, for instance, uh, a company is required to, be, uh, to have a track record uh, in multiple locations before being accepted uh, to incorporate in, uh, in Saudi Arabia. And on top of all that, uh, the process was a very lengthy one and uh, th there wasn't a reference uh, basically for the process. Um, startups take challenges, but they, they need a minimum of, uh, of, of clarity. Uh, until then, uh, this wasn't, uh, wasn't the case. But things are changing. Yeah, so uh, there's been a lot of change that's happened. I mean, I'm sure you're all aware of a lot of the different, whether it's the social changes that have been happening in Saudi, uh, lots of uh, uh, new uh, government reforms that have been taking place that have been announced. Um, there's, you know, as I, as I mentioned about the, the economic environment, I mean, the exciting part is actually there's a l relative lack of competition in the market because of these challenging barriers uh, to be able to enter. Uh, so you, you have a, a thirsty market that has not yet gotten a lot of um, uh, locally built products. So now uh, what we're seeing is uh, there's, there's a lot of action that's, that's actually taking place behind a lot of the rhetoric that's happened saying that we want to open up, uh, we want to make things easier for SMEs. So what uh, Rolam mentioned before, uh, it, you know, 100% foreign ownership used to only be open to the likes of GEs and IBMs, et cetera, like the, the largest uh, companies in the world. Uh, now they're saying, you know what, we would like the best of to be able to come in, uh, found their companies, and, and, uh, and bring that know-how and bring that economic impact uh, to the country. Uh, and so th for the first time, there's really a, a vehicle to do that in a fast and low-cost way. Um, and, and that's kind of what we're here, the meat of what we're here to kind of discuss with you. We're, we're actually keeping this discussion quite short. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll, 
uh, we'll give you the, the outline of that um, so that you have a sense of what exactly this means. Uh, and then we're, what we'll do is we'll open it up for a bunch of questions, which I'm sure you have uh, on your mind. So if you, if you flip to the next page. And, and perhaps yeah. worth mentioning yeah. that we at Asso Labs, uh, it's not that we recently went to, to Saudi. So we've been active on the ground uh, since five years. Uh, our license uh, process uh, was started a couple of years ago, so we've been through the old environment. <laughs> so the two years is like... A and you'll hear story. this, it's typical, right? <laughs> it takes a long time to set things up, it's painful, it's unclear, etc., etc., etc. And we've seen the changes, so th this is like a first-hand account. Uh, it's not that we're just riding the wave of things happening, and we've been actively implementing we had the opportunity of uh, testing actually these new re uh, regulations so basically in a nutshell um, uh, saudi arabian general investment authority sagia has uh, a new scheme uh, for entrepreneurship licenses uh, basically they allow 100 percent foreign ownership without all the crazy requirements that were needed before in terms of capital, in terms of track records, in terms of uh, like, you know, size of the companies. Just like Mohammed said, any company with some innovation looking to uh, enter the, the market gets access to it. And the, it's, it's pretty straightforward. We've, we've tested it with, uh, with uh, close to 10 uh, licenses so far. Uh, it takes weeks. And entrepreneurs can immediately uh, have a SAGIA license and a commercial registry that allows them to do uh, business in, in the kingdom. Yeah, so let me explain a bit about, so uh, basically the way it works um, in, in Saudi is uh, there's the Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority called SAGIA, which issues a license. That license can be used to then get a CR or a business license in Saudi, right? Th w and the, 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 the CR that you would get fr using, a, uh, using the Sagia channel is actually like an onshore company. So it's a little bit different than the Dubai. Yeah. If, you're, if you're familiar with the Dubai model of having like you're basically your free zone company, um, which is 100% foreign owned, in Saudi, there's a, uh, it's actually the ability to get an onshore company that can operate anywhere in the kingdom, right? There are some restrictions in terms of uh, business activities, which we'll talk about and, and uh, we'll give you some more context around. But also it's important to note that this structure is not just for non-Saudis or non-Gulf um, uh, citizens. Uh, actually, a lot of companies choose to use this structure to be able to bring on for, uh, other investors onto the table. So in Saudi, it's a bit different than in the UAE. Um, uh, there is no foreign ownership on for, for the onshore companies, right? So it's 100% uh, Saudi owned versus the 5149 structure here. So uh, if you want a structure that enables you to have um, you know, non-GCC uh, shareholders. This is a this is a structure that can be used. So now, as Rolan mentioned, this for the first time that structure is being opened up for uh, SMEs and for those that are uh, in, a, in a smaller size. But importantly, they need to go through a filtration process, prove that they're innovative uh, and something that will really add value to the economy. And this is where you know our collaboration has come in with. Uh, actually, the um, the SME General Authority in Saudi Arabia and with Sagia, um, and and we are actually the first uh, foreign incubator licensed by Sagia, in order to uh, facilitate this for other companies coming into the kingdom. Uh, so 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 uh, an, a company approved at Astrolab Saudi will get a letter of support from Astrolab saying that this is a uh, viable, innovative business which should get the special Sagia entrepreneurship license. Mm -hmm. um, as Rolan mentioned, we've taken that now through with our pilot uh, companies, about 10 companies um, have been through the full process. This is actually the first one, um, an Astrolabs Dubai alum, um, uh, Love in Dubai actually expanded to uh, Saudi. Love There's in Love Saudi. in Saudi. <laughs> Right. So Rich was uh, so Richard was is the is the MD and is the very first. And he's there in the photo with um, our director of operations in Saudi Arabia. And they Saad an article uh, about their experience uh, throughout the process yep. from so the get go till that photo. Exactly. So give, giving the, uh, the the rundown of what it was like to actually get. So this what he's holding in his hand right now 
uh, is the CR. So this is the actual business license that came after getting the Sagia license. And so this is the, the, uh, the fruit of, uh, of that problem. This, this is, this, that enables them to, to actually do business in Saudi. Okay, Wh which is the starting point? I mean, it, it's, it doesn't end at, uh, at the CR. There are some extra steps uh, that need to be taken, again, a little bit different from how things go uh, in, in Dubai. Uh, all of us are, are used to free zones and a certain uh, mode of operation. So once that level of registration is uh, completed, the companies, uh, especially when you need to hire and, and like, you know, have people on your payroll, you still need, you still have some steps to go through Ministry of Labor, Zakat, uh, go see for uh, insurance, uh, municipality, is municipality needed uh, across the board? No, so there's, yeah. there's, there's some that, depending on your activity, depending on, uh, but there's going to be steps that you need to do, as Rolana is saying, is, is to open up other files with other uh, ministries that don't necessarily talk to each other directly, right? So that's a bit more dis distributed in Saudi. You can start doing work legally with the CR, um, and, it, and it, a registration with the Chamber of Commerce. But for instance, when you want to hire somebody, you need to register with the Minister of Labor, right? You w w and then similarly, when you're hiring somebody, you need to register with the, the basically the, uh, the insurance scheme there, right? Uh, which is GOSI. So there's a few of these things that need to be done, which you can do yourself, or you can appoint a third party to be able to help you through that process. Can they have their own visa as investors before? Yeah, so that? also the, one of the n new um, elements that, that Sagi is bringing to the table with this specific type of entrepreneurship uh, uh, license is that the founders, um, the shareholders in the company can get a residency visa in Saudi uh, based on their uh, status as basically a, a founder or shareholder. Uh, and that can be done on the front end. Once the, any follow-on visas, any follow-on residencies will happen after, you know, Ministry of Labor um, uh, file is opened and will go through the standard process exactly. of basically hiring, of which there are some you know, restrictions in Saudi in terms of Saudiization, point system, etc., that s that differ based on your activity and differ based on your size, right? So smaller companies have less stringent requirements, uh, but as soon as you start to go beyond like five people, it gets more stringent in terms of uh, Saudiization. So these are things to keep in mind, which would be the same you know, rules and, and regulations that would be applied to any company, okay? So uh, what do we do as Astro Labs uh, to support this process? Uh, it's Pretty straightforward. Uh, we touched on a few of the points. The letter of uh, endorsement that is a required uh, document for any company to benefit from this SAGIA license is um, uh, what primarily uh, what we're offering to vetted uh, entrepreneurs and startups who are applying through uh, Astro Labs. Um, that letter and uh, dedicated uh, a relationship manager or somebody from our team who's executing or taking that process forward on behalf of the company. Um, so basically, Love in Dubai, for instance, did the entire process remotely. We were leading, we were taking uh, ownership uh, of that process uh, on their behalf, su uh, applying, uh, uh, submitting all the documents, following up on the application and all that. And they all needed, they only needed to go to Saudi uh, at one point in order to uh, sign. Okay, so uh, we help with, with that entire process that leads to uh, the license, the CR, and also uh, we have recently uh, finalized our co-working space. So in addition to the, uh, the license and the CR, we host companies physically in Riyadh, we tried as much as possible to take our model to uh, uh, to Riyadh. Uh, uh, the uh, the co-working space that you're seeing here is uh, up and running now. We're signing up uh, the, the, the the first uh, cohort of uh, of members. Uh, we're aiming to launch it uh, sometimes uh, uh, in in November, mid to end uh, November. Uh, it's in North Riyadh, Northern Riyadh, where. Uh, almost all the new businesses. It's the, the new business uh, area of, uh, of Riyadh, uh, basically. Um, yep. So yeah, we're, uh, the space is soft launched. It's operational right now. So anybody that's uh, looking for a place to actually be able to work out of well in Riyadh, if, even if uh, without a company, 
uh, just to, uh, flying in, uh, utilizing the space. And as Rolan mentioned, we're planning on doing a formal launch um, uh, in, a, in about a couple of months. Um, the, uh, we, we are, you know, we, we've already taken uh, multiple companies through the process, so happy to have chats with you about, you know, the, uh, the details of it. But really what we wanted to do is um, uh, save uh, a bunch of time to uh, answer any questions that you guys might have about, you know, the, uh, uh, the process or any kind of uh, questions um, that might be on your mind that, uh, that we may be able to solve. A lot of this is actually... Uh, quite new, just overall. So a lot of the regulations are, you know, just be, have been released, and some of them are not super clear. And we're trying to kind of uh, pick them apart with our lawyers, with the government authorities, and helping actually define some of this with the uh, with the with the authorities um, there in partnership. Uh, but there is a lot of potential, um, and we're seeing that. And and now this these structures actually will enable a lot of people to be able to to come in and start doing business and, and make an impact there. I know one of the a lot of times, you know, in the past, it was the logic was to come, you know, to to Dubai in order to be able to access Saudi. Now you can actually go straight into Saudi um, in a way that you never, you know, were able to uh, to before. Okay, so. Um, yeah, that's that's the that's the overview. Again, we don't want to make it too long of a uh, overview. We could talk on and on, but maybe more interesting to hear any questions that might be on your mind, so that we can uh, we can help uh, answer. I came a bit late. I missed first few slides. Uh, so, uh, uh, what I saw in the end, like you have opened a center in Riyadh, and you help with the CR creation, getting the license. Um, so how much it cost and everything? Did you cover it in the previous slides? So, I mean, w we can definitely sit down with you if you're interested to actually take things forward. We can sit down with you and break down the costs and how it all works and the government fees and all of that. Uh -huh. um, I, I can. There were a few people that came in late, so for the benefit of them, um, what I'll do is I'll do a quick one-minute recap of, sure. of what we do, and then and then we can go to the next questions. All right. Okay. So basically, we we started the discussion by saying that there's a big trend right now: Saudi opening up economically socially, etc. That's been paired with a lot of changes in the regulations, uh, which are be to, to the benefit of SMEs and to innovative companies. We are actually the first foreign incubator as Astrolabs licensed in Saudi to help um, innovative companies enter into the kingdom under 100% foreign ownership. Um, that process is brand new. Um, it's taken a, proce uh, a process that used to take, um, you know, over a year sometimes, definitely months, down to weeks. Um, made it much cheaper, much faster, and much more efficient. And has created a way for people to be able to enter into Saudi and, and access that market. Now, there's a lot of different, you know, uh, so some constraints, some things that we can talk about, but that's the gist of it. And we opened alongside with that, just like we have a sp spaces here in Dubai, we opened up a space in Riyadh, which is serves as kind of like a soft landing um, that couples with this um, licensing product uh, and is uh, is a place to be able to do business out of that's uh, that just recently uh, soft launched, right? So that's kind of the, the summary. And if you have any specific questions about, you know, um, uh, the uh, the environment in Saudi or you know the uh, the product etc. Just uh, let us know. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. First of all, uh, my name is Mazen Aisa, and I run a, a a startup from Dubai Technology Entrepreneurship Center, and um, uh, within the Dubai Silicon Oasis uh, Free Zone. So it's uh, my experience with them is that they're really smooth. Uh, very supportive uh, 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 for startups. So what I was wondering about is whether there is a free zone counterpart um, um, in Saudi that is similar. Uh, other than I don't know, um, Saga seems to be just like an uh, like an establishment that issues licenses. But is it how does it compare to a free zone authority here? That's that's for the first question. If you want to. Yeah, so it's a different structure in Saudi. As I mentioned earlier, it's not based on free zones. So you will get uh, a license which enables you to work anywhere in, uh, in Saudi. So it's not linked to a single zone per se. 
Um, so there is a support structure that Sagia offers. The, the the you know people who are getting licensed through there. That if you need help getting connected with other government entities, and of course you would have Astrolabs as the incubator, um, which would be kind of a home base uh, to enable connections with uh, uh, local entrepreneurship community, to enable a lot of the things that similar things to what we do here, uh, which is events and programming and mentorship and all these types of things to smooth the ride, basically, um, of getting your Uh, set up. What about office requirements? Right, so we have an office space um, that w- that serves as a soft landing, right? That's the co-working space. So Sagia requires me to have an office before they give me the Sagia license? Or so you would need to be, to get this uh, Saudi, to get the entrepreneurship license, you need to be affiliated with an incubation center, right? This is a special kind of license that you need to be actually uh, vetted by and you need to be hosted by Uh, one of the approved incubators, right? And so that's what we're, we're the, yeah, we're the first foreign one. And there are some at universities, some government run ones, et cetera, in Saudi. So there's, there's, a, there's a, a list of them that are operational in Saudi. And we're the first ones coming in internationally. And we're the only ones that, are, that have offices between uh, Dubai and Riyadh, which also members can then utilize space here and there. And so we have some flexibility in that regard. Okay. And you, I have one more question, yeah. and it's more fundamental. Yeah. Can I, do, do I need to create an entity in Saudi Arabia to access the market? Or like uh, you guys hinted earlier, some people use Dubai to access Saudi. Can I just do that? Yeah, so it really depends on your business model, what you're planning on doing, and how deep you're wanting to go into the market, right? So it's setting up an entity there is not for everyone. Um, in fact, we were working, we've been working in Saudi, as Rolan mentioned, for the last five years, you know, and we were flying in, working with partners to do different capability building and training and such out of Dubai. Um, but there came a time when it was time for us to go uh, local, and that means uh, be able to build a local brand, get, you know, open up a bank account, hire locally, uh, go into contracts locally, etc., which you can't do remotely. So that's the, that was the, the decision point for, for us. And a lot of companies similarly, like for instance, if we took the Augustus, which is Love in uh, Dubai, wanted to launch a Love in Saudi, they can launch a Love in Saudi from Dubai, right, as just a content site. But eventually, if you want to hire a local team and you want to be able to get the contracts for advertising and do all these types of things, you'll need to have a local entity. So it really de- the answer is the it depends right? there's definitely some level of validation you can make before yes. or you should make before you actually invest in that move just like even if you're coming to dubai yep. uh, you work with local partners and whatnot so is the um the whole like 100 ownership thing work as long as you're a startup or like um how does the 100 ownership thing work is it like forever thing or how does that work Wh- like what do you mean? Like the 100% ownership thing. Is it uh, foreigners, that can, foreigners can have 100% ownership of yep. their business in Saudi? Um, I mean, as long as, like, as far as I know, that I've never heard about like 100% ownership. So I wanted to know, is that like, is it only for startups or is it general? Or how is it, how does that work? No, it's not uh, like a time limited or uh, a status of company limited. Once you're in that scheme, Uh, as as a company, uh, you you keep that status. You're f- you're hundred uh, percent foreign owned. I think that's the, the uh, that was your question. Not as long as you're a startup, you could be a, a big company coming to Saudi and qualifying through that uh, that scheme, um, and and uh, keep that hundred percent ownership. Yeah, and you haven't heard about it because it's brand new, right? Yeah. That's why. And so that this is the, uh, the the latest that's happened, and it's 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 refreshing that actually the. The, the the news and the PR have actually you know they've they've been implemented. Coupled with yeah, uh, yeah. implementation. implementation. Right? Yeah. Thank you. And what about opening a bank account? Yeah. What about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so opening a bank account, um, it's uh, since you will have a full you know Saudi operational license. Um, opening up a bank account is. Uh, you go, you follow the same process as any other company opening up a bank account. Uh, in Saudi, uh, that's sometimes challenging, um, depending on your structure. So one piece of rec- you know advice um, is to keep the structure as simple as possible, especially when you're first launching. And what I mean by that is about the ownership structure of the company. So if the company is owned by individuals um, who can be there physically, it makes a lot of the steps a lot easier. If you're a more complex structure with a subsidiary status, 
you know, owned by another company, um, there you'll you'll have to do attestations and you'll have to do. Um, it's a Power bit more. Attorney. Yeah, it, it's a it's a bit more um, involved, but you can go and open up a bank account using this. Well, it's not easy in either the UAE or Saudi, um, but it's probably more difficult in Saudi. Yeah, uh, generally you can apply that to everything. Uh, a company in this uh, free zone can it do business with outside free zone entities? So it's not a free zone, and it it, it so the answer is it can do business with anybody in Saudi because it's not a free zone. So you're actually this is this is a onshore company. It's right? an onshore so you're company. you're basically getting an onshore company in Saudi that can do business anywhere in Saudi. Oh, okay. That's why it's a bit different than uh, the, so the free zone. I know yeah. it's like if you're in the UAE mindset, it's uh, it's free it's, zone it's different. free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's the challenge. Yeah. Can you pass the mic behind you? So basically, I don't know about that, but uh, free zones doesn't exist in Saudi, or it's just this uh, scheme of Sagia that it's. Well, there's different there's different schemes. There's different um, uh, you know, there are different authorities that are that are that have a similar structure. But this is this is the most let's say um, mainstream and the one that gives you the most flexibility. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you'll be limited to a certain geography, yeah, right? There are, there are some. There are some. Happening in specific geographic yep. areas, okay. more or less confined, mm -hmm. there, which is a little bit like free zones. Yep. This is a lot. This is a lot better. That's why we, we ended up going down this route because it just gives you a lot more flexibility to be able to do and it. It works. It works. Yeah. So the other but tests still like still <laughs> are, 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 are in theory. They're, they're but Sagia is just for entrepreneurs, no. or it's uh, just the one that you are doing. Um, so we we are facilitating the what's called the entrepreneurship license, okay. right? But that but is, is that like can be for you know international companies entering in that mm -hmm. are starting, right? Um, and Sagia is for everything, as I mentioned, okay. from GE down to okay. you know uh, Roland and I want to go start up a you know <laughs> uh, a bookshop. Thank you. All right, uh, here let me pass on to. Uh, Hi, thank you very much for the presentation. I had a few questions actually. So one of my questions will be if this uh, status allow you to work with government entities because I know for example in UAE you can have some restriction if you are based in a free zone if you are not a LTD some government entities will not allow you to work with them so that will be my first question my second question it's about like visa so as you said like the founder of this uh, company is allowed to have like a residency visa if I'm not mistaken does it give him the right as well to invite other people to come to the country um, and my third question will be on, um, I mean, you did answer it a little bit, but when when do we make like the right business choice to say we want to open the, the business in Saudi versus like dealing with Saudi entities or companies from the UAE? So it's really hard and it's a bit blurry to know like when is the right time to make this choice. And uh, if you have like a top level uh, insight about how long it takes at the end of the day to Built this business. You said it used to take years and months. Now are we talking still about like months? So thank you very much. I think the answer for question one is yes. You can work with government. There isn't that uh, <coughs> distinction that uh, is here between like free zone um, company versus on uh, inland company that the government would uh, would accept working with versus not working with free zones. So that's question that's number. That's as far one. as we know. As far as we know. Um, now, jumping to three, uh, uh, question three. Basically, you, you wouldn't want to go to Saudi un until or unless you have enough demand and momentum that would require you specifically to have people on the ground for an extended period of time, like full time basically, uh, growing that market. So I would say that the best time to go to the market is when you have generated, and there are multiple ways to do that, uh, indirectly from here or through partners on the ground, enough demand or built your pipeline specifically, and I'm just talking about your case in services, for instance, where you know that, oh, you've got a pipeline of um, uh, X uh, millions, uh, and you need people to deploy it, because I mean, that, going b back to question one, Maybe it thousands. will be it will be hard <laughs> it will be hard to uh, work with the Saudi market remotely, as in just like flying in people to do a job and and go back. Yeah. We have to mention here that you know there is this like growing trend of 
they want to work with people that are investing in the market. So it's not like by the book, it's not allowed, but if you're a company with a local presence, you will have uh, uh, more chance than a company who's just taking the morning flight from Dubai and going there to, uh, to sign a deal. But don't rush into it because that alone will not get you the business. Yeah, that's not gonna get you business, exactly. Yeah. That's a gr I mean, I think that's a good nuance. I mean, it's a great question because um, even here, when we have, so here in Dubai, uh, we enable a similar s structure through the DMCC. So if you want to get, if you're an entrepreneur, you want to set up in mm -hmm. Dubai, um, we enable a subsidized uh, license um, and set up in Dubai. And so we have, we have entrepreneurs that come and say, oh, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, get this thing licensed and go. Well, it's like the license is not the first step, right? So it's uh, usually there's testing, usually there's finding, you know, finding your first customers, et cetera. And then you don't put the, 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 the paperwork before the actual business. Now, if you have an ongoing business, as you're mentioning, I think what Rolan men mentioned, it makes exact sense. Um, you can do quite a bit remotely. Um, and we definitely don't recommend rushing into just setting it up. But at the same time, it is relatively easy now to set these structures up and it gives you the right base um, from which to be able to grow. And it does take some time. Although we said it takes a few weeks to get the Sagia license CR thing done. If you want the full stack of all the stuff that we're talking about, it's still going to take you like a year to get all this stuff done. I mean, let's be realistic in terms of all the other government registrations, getting your bank account set up, figuring out all those. I mean, it can still take months in order to get everything yeah. set up. So instead of you um, delaying, delaying, delaying that, you can start that process, get the things rolling, and so that you're kind of ready um, when when things do kind of pick up. Now, to your second question about um, Invitation. invitations, uh, so. So the company itself, once it's set up, you can start inviting um, and, and issuing um, invitations, invitations. V letter, letters to be able to get visas. So that's part of basically the, uh, the process. Okay. In the back. Uh, hey, um, my name is Ibrahim. I'm a co-founder of the Smash Room. And my question is, when it comes to franchise, so uh, basically I am... I want to sell a franchise to Saudi. Uh, what's new? And is there something that, you know, gives us more flexibility, more control, ownership? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll have to check on, uh, you know, that, that's a good question for a lawyer. Um, so I don't want to step outside of bounds of like things that I actually know about. So I'm not going to pretend. <laughs> so it, yeah, it's a good question about fr uh, franchising and how that, that might work. I mean, it's it, really what we're talking about here is um, the, the ownership structure over a company, right? So if you want to do, it depends if you're doing like a, is it a JV that you're going to be setting up in, in the country? If, if, what, what is the ownership structure uh, of, of the... Uh, so, so it's like a local partner who builds the place yeah. and uh, we give him the brand and the stuff. So it's, it's, it's a basic franchise model. Yeah. So, I, I, I mean, again, we can have a chat on the side and discuss, and we can also connect you with some of our, our, our uh, experts um, that might know if any, uh, anything is, has, has changed on that front. But generally, what we're talking about here is just basically – uh, protecting you in terms of setting up an actual structure and an entity and if you wanted to create it as a JV as I mentioned earlier with a local partner mm -hmm. so that you own X percent they own X percent you know that's doable otherwise if it's just a straight contract I don't think much has changed right, right. yeah cool you want to pass it I guess uh, sorry I might be asking something you discussed already um, but uh, Astral Labs Dubai is a tech-based uh, incubator is it same in Saudi or, or do you guys do any business? So in, in principle, the list of uh, activities that qualify to the uh, Sagia uh, entrepreneurship uh, license that we're uh, mentioning is broader than the mandate that we're operating under here at mm -hmm. uh, in the MCC. So in principle, it's non-tech. However, because it's a new scheme and uh, there's like this drive on innovation and like the high value add uh, companies, we're starting to see that uh, th there is like a higher uh, probability that a company that is non-value add, like trading, even though like th you might find uh, uh, an activity for it, 
will not be uh, accepted or will not be easy to, to license. So uh, going back to, to our roots, we as, as a local incubator, we are like uh, known for tech and we're trying to have a good concentration of uh, tech innovation digital. Uh, but that said, there are companies that we helped uh, license that are non-tech. Thank you, yes. All right, so uh, my name is Anam, I'm the owner of evahad.com. So yeah, I just wanted to know, like, uh, is it uh, mandatory to have a partner uh, back in case, hey, like a local partner in order to start a business or you can just start by your own? So, uh, so, th so the short answer is no, you don't need the, 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 the uh, uh, the benefit of this scheme is that actually you don't need to have a local partner on the ground. Now that said, um, having a local manager is something different, right? So you can have a structure where the ownership is 100% foreign, so you don't need a partner, equity partner, but it's always helpful to have a local um, manager for the business that's, that has signatory authority and can manage the company. Um, and, uh, and so that, that's something to keep in mind, right? But the answer to your question actually is no. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that's actually following the, the, uh, the question that I had in mind, sorry, uh, was about this, uh, I mean, Saudi Saudization or yep. whatever. We've seen a lot of businesses closing down because they didn't yep. follow the requirement of Saudization. So is it like a mandatory? Yep. Uh, it is. So I think uh, but for innovative, for, for smaller companies, the restrictions are, are, are uh, they're, they're less strict, right? Um, and again, we won't go into all the details on specific numbers because it really does depend on the activity, the size, et cetera, the function, there's the function of the, so there's, there's different um, uh, constraints, but you do need to be hiring local as in a mix with, uh, with foreigners um, in order to stay, you know, um, uh, compliant with the Saudiization law. And that's something to look into as you plan your expansion. Yeah. The good news is there's a lot of good talent in Saudi. Um, and it's just a matter of, you know, you Find finding it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, definitely there. I mean, that's a big misnomer. I think there's a big, there's a deep yeah. talent pool, and and something that uh, you can definitely take advantage of. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm Bishali. I am with an AR VR firm, and um, so we've got presence in India. We've got a lot of presence in US, and we're looking at the Middle East, Saudi. We've got some good uh, leads now. Um, once we enter there, how much time do we have before this? You know, Nagwit kind of asked, asked all the questions I had. Um, how much time do we have before we have to start, you know, hiring the local talent? Is it a disadvantage to send all this ARVR firm to the U.S. office? Um, does that work against us, especially because we're looking at Saudi government projects? So... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, uh, one way to look at it is that you're in a heavy content creation uh, context. And, uh, you know, content, for it to be successful, needs a lot of uh, localization. And, uh, I mean, I, f from practical perspective, I, I wouldn't imagine it working so much remotely on the long term with, uh, with the U.S. So nobody will, will have, like, a, a, a time, a, a, a clock saying now you have to hire people. But at one point, uh, you will be uh, better perceived as a business counterpart uh, if you have uh, local staff, if you, you invested in, uh, uh, in the local operation, and it will be more feasible. I mean, keep in mind, you're in a creative content play. There's a lot of iterations, uh, you need people, and if you know the market a little bit, even working hours are different. A lot of the, the actual work in Saudi happens uh, at, at night. Uh, like over tea, like in over person. tea in right. person. So that's the thing to keep in mind is that the context, as well as Roland saying, is like you got to if you you have to invest in order to be able to really reap the. Of course, you might be able to get a project or two in, but if you really see a high potential, having somebody there on the ground that can go and see and meet and talk and be there physically, can have you know a a, a big impact on the opportunity set that you even see, right? Hi, my name is Rashid Al Falasi, uh, owner of Slash Coffee. Uh, you said something about insurance, G O C I insurance. Is it the health insurance? Uh, this is one question. 
because you, here you need to pay insurance for uh, Ministry of Labor. Uh, another thing is uh, zakah and tax. How is it done? And um, can you give us examples of activities under uh, Sagia? Okay, so um, so it's similar to so uh, so uh, uh, my understanding is it's 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 similar. Gosi is similar to like the the. Uh, uh, like ta'minat or the the um, uh, like labor uh, insurance. Labor insurance. Um, it, it's uh, uh, national. Uh, um, I believe it's 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 actually the uh, like the pension. Um, Security. Yeah. Security the, the, the 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 yeah. Yeah, so I forgot the, the the acronym exactly what it what it stands for, but we can follow up with you afterwards, right? It doesn't relate to the pension um, Yeah, we can we can follow up with you uh, afterwards about exactly what it relates to. Um, and y your the other question was about tax, so you have to so you have to be aware of the fact that um, if you set up a sagia entity, um, the, it it is subject to tax. It's twenty percent tax on profit. Um, so that's something to keep in mind um, uh, versus the, I believe it's, uh, what is it, it's 2.5% um, zakah? Yeah. So uh, that, that if you're looking to set something up in a, you know, a GCC structure versus a Sagia structure is what you're, th there's a, that's, that's a differential. So you have to keep that in mind. Well, that's the VAT. I'm saying about the ownership structure. If it's own owned by, you know. If you set it up as a Sagia company, okay, if it's non-Sagia, non my understanding is then you you would be subject to to uh, to zakah, and VAT is separate, which everybody is subject to, right? VAT is is, uh, but that's something to keep in mind, right? So there is tax there. It's not like here. There is tax on Sagia licensed companies, and even so, the, the what I mentioned is even if it's a Saudi like has Saudi shareholders, I believe they're taxed on the percentage of non. Uh, on, a, on a percentage basis of the, of, uh, the non-Saudi shareholders. But again, these are details that we'll, we'll have to, um, uh, you know, uh, reconfirm, right? Um, so you had that, you had a question about the uh, activities. So activity-wise, um, there are some restrictions because it's an onshore license, right? So if you're, uh, one of the things that we came up against, actually quite relevant for our, you know, uh, uh, base is, um, the uh, e-commerce as one example. Um, so e-commerce e is like a restricted activity because it's basically like a general trading activity, um, which can be licensed by Sagia, but goes back to a lot of the restrictions the, or the requirements that Rala mentioned earlier, which is a huge share capital requirement, operational in multiple geographies outside of Saudi, et cetera. So it's meant to enable very large players to enter. So right now, the, 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 if you're a software or if you're a platform or if you're something which is um, not s selling in, in, in physical goods, that's the, that's the smoothest path forward. Um, but if you are trying to do something in the trading capacity, that's not really enabled through this entrepreneurship license. You'd still be subject to kind of like standard Sagia requirements. Um, if that and I sense. think th the more offline the activity is, the more similar discoveries we will have. Uh, I mean, th this e-commerce thing wasn't written anywhere. The activity is in the activity list, but then you just We're learning as we go, basically. We're learning yeah. as we go. Because we tried to and license one. that is why, going back to the tech versus not tech, that is why we're keeping a high concentration of tech, because anything tech and innovation uh, is like high likelihood of being accepted in a straightforward yep. way. While we do tests on additional uh, additional type of licenses in parallel, makes sense. Great. Is there a final final question? Might be anybody's mind. <laughs> Anybody who hasn't asked a question, by the way, that, uh, that has something goes to there. on <laughs> on their mind. I have a general question. General question. Okay. No, I just want to make sure that we're covering everybody's questions. But yeah, we can hear your general question. Yeah, it's fair. I, I already asked three. <laughs> We're counting. <laughs> um, so yeah, my, my I like this uh, tri uh, trivia culture uh, cultural uh, remark you made about people working after hours 
over T and, and so on. Do you have, do you notice some more differences about this? Can you describe how they work a bit more? If you have um, maybe a few other uh, interesting items you think? Because I want to learn more than just the business environment, but about the culture of how they work, um, how they behave maybe. Very wide. Well, you can't really generalize, yeah, right? So we're not going to go into like a generalization yeah. of a people, but I think uh, you know that's why. I mean, the short answer is you have to spend more time on the ground. You have yeah. to get to know, you know, um, uh, Saudis and uh, uh, add Saudis to your team and really integrate if you want. If this is a priority market, because you know, I that the inquisitiveness and the question is well placed. I think that's a great, you know, it's a great thing to be thinking about, but it's not going to be answered through, you know. Um, you know, my pontifications about it. It's going to be answered through, you know, really, you know, going there and meeting people and, 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 and learning it firsthand. And that's one of the, now it's th this kind of a vehicle facilitates that in an easier way than before. So, you know, if it used to be something which is like super difficult to do and how could I ever do it and whatever, now it's like, okay, well, I can just go ahead and take this step. And it's still going to be hard to break into the market. This is not a ticket to you know, crazy growth curve in terms of sales. It's still a, it's still a difficult market to penetrate this despite, you know, having a, uh, you know, uh, an easier corporate structure or a formation of an entity. Getting an entity does not mean that you've, you know, <laughs> succeeded in the market, right? But it is at least a ticket to be able to enter in and then, you know, start doing the hard work of, of building the groundwork and, and, uh, and, and getting in. Yeah, right? and whether you're an enterprise play or a consumer play, in both cases, the profiles are different than what you're used to here or uh, elsewhere. Uh, consumers co uh, behave differently, uh, especially on, on the digital side, uh, totally different uh, uh, channels and uh, type of content and, and all that. And on the enterprise level, we come closer to uh, the, the difference in, in behavior in terms of transacting, like email uh, 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 responsiveness and all that is low. WhatsApp, you always get an answer on WhatsApp. You, you, you do, uh, w if it's in Arabic, it's much higher uh, uh, conversion. I mean, it's amazing, like, you know. So at, at one point, you stop emailing. Uh, you know, we, we did the entire <laughs> project for our co-working space in, in Riyadh over WhatsApp. Not a single email was, uh, was sent, and it worked brilliantly. That space, really nice place. We wouldn't have found it if it wasn't for our colleague Saad, who's on the ground, who found it, like, uh, by, by, by pure serendipity and, like, we... Got it done. And a lot and of hard work of just going of and like hard knocking work. on doors and whatever, physically, there. right? Exactly. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you so much for coming today. I mean, we're, we're going to hang out here for a bit after the, yeah. uh, the, the, the formal uh, uh, presentation is over. But thanks so much, importantly, for all of your questions uh, because that's, uh, I think, helps everybody to be able to answer some. If there's anything that we couldn't answer, you want to follow up with us or something that's kind of more individual, uh, please uh, come, come see us. Or, or, or just uh, KSA at astrolabs.com is the inbox that we'll uh, get back to you on uh, on that. And if you'd like to take the next step forward, get more you know details about uh, the structure, how we how we do it, and you know uh, the contract and details of working with us to make this happen, just let us know and uh, and we can uh, sit with you about that. All right. Thanks so much for joining Thanks us. Thanks for coming.